Hey everyone, sorry it's uh, been a while, but uh, let's get ourselves caught up, continuing our discussion of the Odyssey by Homer, specifically the Robert Fagel's translation, and this is book 16, Father and Son. If you remember, uh, Odysseus is hanging out with the swineherd, his loyal swineherd, Eumaeus, and um, Telemachus has just returned to Ithaca after his long uh, journey to talk to Nestor and to talk to Menelaus to try to figure out what's happened with his dad. And so this one is father and son, which uh, in this case now what we will see is that um, the two are going to be reunited. And we'll see uh, the hand that Athena plays in helping all of this take shape. Um, a few things are planted in this particular book that we see come to play in the following book, book 17, um, and I'll try to, you know, highlight those things as, as we go, all right? So, as always, let's go ahead and let's uh, get started. Let's jump right into the actual text and look at the, uh, the words on the page and try to make some uh, understanding of this, all right? So, we got Father and Son. I'm starting from the very beginning here. Uh, as Don came into the lodge, the king and loyal swineherds set out to breakfast. They had, raked, they had raked the fire up and got the herdsmen off with droves of pigs. And now, Telemachus. The howling dogs went nuzzling up around him, not a growl, as he approached. From inside, Odysseus noticed the pack's quiet welcome, noticed the light tread of footsteps, too, and turned to Eumaeus quickly, winged, winged a word. Eumaeus. Here comes a friend of yours, I'd say. Someone who knows at least the pack, uh, someone you know at least, the pack's not barking. Must be fawning around him. I can hear his footfall. The words were still on his lips when his own son stood in the doorway there. Okay, so the idea is like, yeah, the dogs aren't freaking out on him. The dogs aren't barking or anything because the dogs know him. This is Telemachus. And if we have the... Um, you know, loyal swineherd, you know, his, his dogs are just as loyal. So this loyal swineherd is remaining loyal to the family and is remaining loyal to Telemachus, even though Odysseus is gone. And even so, we're going to see it that Telemachus, as he has come back on uh, to, you know, come back on to the island of Ithaca, he's going to, you know, he's, he's already uh, heading straight to the swineherd to pay him uh a visit. And so, you know, this is just the confirmation of just how uh, close this Eumaeus, this swineherd, is with the, the family, with uh, Odysseus' family. It says, the, the swineherd started up, continuing on. Amazed, he dropped the bowls with a clatter. He had been busy mixing ruddy wine. Straight to the prince he rushed and kissed his face and kissed his shining eyes, both hands as the tears rolled down his cheeks. As, this is a nice epic simile right here, as a father, brimming with love, welcomes home his darling son in a warm embrace, what pain he's borne for him and him alone, home now, in the tenth year from far abroad, so the loyal swineherd hugged the beaming prince. He clung for dear life, covered him with kisses, yes, like one escaped from death. And it's very interesting here, but that is the way that this is written. That is the, um, the epic simile that the author has chosen here because it's the, the swineherd is welcoming Telemachus home as if, a, you know, as a father would welcome a son home who has been away for 10 years, all right? So we're not kidding when we talk about loyalty here with this particular swineherd. That's how close we're talking about in that it's almost indistinguishable about their relationship and as, as close as father and son. All right, Eumaeus uh, wept and sobbed. His words flew from the heart. You're home, Telemachus, sweet light of my eyes. I never thought I'd see you again once you'd shipped out to Pylos. Quick, dear boy, come in. Let me look at you. Look to my heart's content under my own roof, the rover home at last. You rarely visit the farm and men these days, always keeping to town as if it cheered you to see them there, the infernal cowards the suitors, all right? And a little ribbing there, like you never come to visit me anymore. It's like you you enjoy staying there in town with those suitors. Of course he doesn't, and Eumaeus knows that he doesn't, but what choice does uh, Telemachus think he has 
when these guys are, um, you know, totally destroying his, um, you know, his, his livelihood and the things that are due him. All right. So what we see too is, um, you know, Odysseus jumps up as the beggar. He still looks as a beggar. He does not, Telemachus does not realize that he's in, you know, sharing space with his own father right now. And, um, uh, so the thing is, Odysseus, as a beggar, jumps up and like, hey, you know, take my seat. And Telemachus, you know, exercising that whole Xenia thing, not giving up on that, he says, no, 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 no. I'm sure there's some other place for me to sit and make some place for him to sit. And I thought that was an interesting little piece that we have there. And after this uh, little, you know, offer the seat and, and Telemachus not taking up on it, um, Eumaeus kind of fills in the story of the beggar, how the beggar became, you know, came to Eumaeus's uh, place. Um, and Eumaeus says, uh, he counts on you, he says, for care and shelter. All right, that's the very bottom of that, that second full uh, section there. And then beginning, you know, let's say about line 76, uh, Telemachus is going off again about these suitors. Shelter, oh Eumaeus, Telemachus replied, that word of you, it cuts me to the quick. How can I lend the stranger refuge in my house? I'm young myself. I can hardly trust my hands to fight off any man who rises up against me. Then my mother's wavering, always torn two ways, whether to stay with me and care for the household, true to her husband's bed, the people's voice as well, or leave at long last with the best man in Achaia who courts her in the halls, who offers her the most. But our new guest, since he's arrived at your house, I'll give him a shirt and clothing, uh, cloak to wear, good clothing. All right. And so it's interesting that we see like Telemachus seems to be kind of upset with her mom, say, uh, upset with his mom saying, well, you know, maybe she'll go off with this guy. Maybe she'll go off with that guy. Maybe she'll remain loyal. I don't know. It's, it's he kind of implies that she's wishy-washy here in her um, considering even taking up one of these suitors. All right. Going down to about line 96. He says, but I can't let him go down and join the suitors. Talking about this beggar, okay, which is Odysseus. They're far too abusive. Remember this. Reckless. No, no limits. They'll make a mockery of him. That would break my heart. It's hard for a man to win his way against a mob, even a man of iron. They are much too strong. And so skipping a couple of lines, Odysseus now says, my heart, my God, is torn to pieces hearing this. Both of you telling how these reckless suitors there in your own house against your will plot your ruin. A fine young prince like you. Tell me, though, do you let yourself be so abused or do people round, uh, or do people round about, stirred up by the prompting of some God, despise you? Or are, you, are your brothers at fault? Brothers, a man can trust to fight beside him. True, no matter what deadly blood feud rages on. When I were young as you, kind of sounds like Nestor, right? Whenever we were um, looking at uh, the Iliad. Oh, if I were young again, right? It, when I were young as you to match my spirit now, or were I the son of great Odysseus or the king himself return from all his roving, there's still room for hope. Then let some foreigner lop my head off if I fail to march right into Odysseus's royal halls. This is Odysseus himself talking. March right into Odysseus's royal halls and kill them all. Hmm. Then what if I went down, crushed by their numbers, I fighting alone? I'd rather die, he says, cut down in my own house than have to look at their outrage day by day. All right, remember that. Odysseus says he would rather die, even though he's, he's disguised as somebody else. He would rather die than look at their outrage day by day. Guests treated to blows, men dragging the serving women through the noble house, exploiting them all, no shame. And the gushing wine swilled, the food squandered, gorging for gorging's sake, and the courting games goes on and on, no end in sight. So uh, Telemachus then, you know, tells Eumaeus, go on into town, tell mom that I'm home, uh, but I'm going to remain here because he doesn't want to have to deal 
with those suitors. And if you remember, the suitors were set to ambush him, and he made it around their ambush, and he's made it to Ithaca. So he's aware that these folks aren't, you know, if he's going to show up, it's going to be trouble, all right? And so he's going to send Eumaeus on to say, hey, you know, let mom know that I'm here, all right? So um, there's something here that Eumaeus says before he takes off, and this is at the top of page 343. Um, and he mentions Laertes and what shape Laertes is in. Laertes is Odysseus' father. All right, so here we go. It says, um, it says, Do I go and give her the news of King Laertes too? For many years, poor man, heart sick for his son, he'd always kept an eye on the farm and take his meals with the hired hands, whichever he felt the urge to do. Now from day now from the day you sailed away to Pylos, not a, sh not a sip or bite he's touched. They say, not, not, as he did, not as he did before. And his eyes are shut to all the farmyard labors. Huddled over, groaning in grief and tears, he wastes away the man's all skin and bones. All right, so this, to me, is sort of reminiscent to whenever Odysseus went into the underworld and he ran into his own mom, right? She died of grief. Well, we see that Laert Laertes is doing so poorly, too longing for his son, and it even got worse once Telemachus left to go look for Odysseus, right? So we, what we have here is, um, you know, Laertes suffering in grief at the loss of Odysseus, the potential loss of Telemachus, and the loss of everything that he is trying to set up there, you know, before Odysseus even in Ithaca with these suitors, all right? But have no fear. Athena's arrived, all right? Looking down the last three lines there of page 343, it says, uh, she says, Royal son of Laertes, Odysseus, old campaigner, now is the time. Now, tell your son the truth. Hold nothing back so the two of you can plot the suitor's doom and then set out for town. I myself won't lag behind you long. I'm blazing for battle. All right, so Athena is saying, let's do this. I'm blazing for battle. And if you are someone out there who is blazing for battle and you've got Athena behind you, you know that you're in good shape. If you remember, going all the way back to the, uh, the, apple, the golden apple of discord, remember Hera offered um, Paris, like ruler of um, Asia and Europe. Athena offered wisdom and success in battle. All right, so that is something that she's been offering people success in battle since we started reading, since even before we started reading these two books. All right, so you know, keep that under your hat. All right, let's keep going. Athena stroked him with her golden wand. First, she made the cloak and shirt in his body fresh and clean, then made him taller, supple, young. His ruddy tan came back, kind of like whenever he was getting ready to meet Nausicaa. Remember that. The cut of his jawline firm and the dark beard clustered black around his chin. Her work complete, she went, she went her way once more, and Odysseus returned to the lodge. His own son gazed at him, wonderstruck, terrified too, turning his eyes away suddenly. This, this must be some god. And he let fly with a burst of excla excla exclamations. Friend, you're a new man. Not what I saw before. Your clothes, they've changed. Even your skin has changed. Surely you're some god who rules the vaulting skies. Oh, be kind. And we will give you offerings, gifts of hammered gold to warm your heart. Spare us, please, I beg you. I am not a god. Skipping two lines. No, I'm your father. The Odysseus you wept for all your days. You bore a world of pain, the cruel abuse of men. There, they're now reunited, and they know who each other is, all right? Uh, so Telemachus disbelieves, but Odysseus then, you know, speaks uh, and uh, convinces Telemachus that, yes, he is who he says he is. About line 244, it says, At that, Odysseus sat down again, and Telemachus threw his arms around his great father, sobbing uncontrollably. As deep desire for tears welled up in both, they cried out shrilling cries, pulsing sharper than birds of prey. 
eagles, vultures with hooked claws, when farmers plunder their nests of young, of too young to fly. All right, so they just are overwhelmed, making so much noise in uh, appreciation for the fact that they are reunited. Okay, and then we have Odysseus, you know, for a while he will retell his story, you know, about how he arrived by the Phaeacians and all that kind of stuff. All right, um, and so now I'm on page 346, like 261, two, wait, one, two, three, about 263. Athena's inspiration spurred me here now. So we could plan the slaughter of our foes. Come, give me the full tally of those suitors. I must know their numbers, gauge their strength. Then I'll deploy this old tactician's wits. Okay, I'll employ this old tactician's wits. Decide if the two of us can take them on alone without allies. Or should we hunt reserves to back us up? And so, you know, he goes on. Telemachus says, you know, how on earth could two men fight so many men so strong? These suitors are not just 10 or 20. They're far more. You count them up for yourself now and take a moment. And I've done this. You know, if you name, follow the names that he puts here, it, the tally is about 117 people. So Odysseus is trying to enlist the help of Telemachus to fight against the suitors, and there are 117 of them. It's 117 to 2. All right. Down there at the, at the bottom of that section around... I'd say 287, 288. Think, can you come up with a friend at arms? Some man to fight beside us? Brave, uh, some brave heart? Let me tell you, the old soldier said. Bear in mind now, listen to me closely. Think, will Athena, flanked by Father Zeus, do for the two of us? Or shall I rack my brains for another companion? So you think we can handle it? If we got Athena and Zeus behind us, just the two of us, taking on 117 men? Or do you think I need to enlist more people? So, uh, looking at page 347, Odysseus says to Telemachus, and this is sort of, you know, projecting some things that you can expect to see in the next book. Um, this is about line 300, 1, 2, 3, 4, about 305. says, if they abuse me in the palace, steal yourself. So they're going to go to the palace, and they're going to mix and mingle with these suitors. But he says... If they abuse me in the palace, steal yourself, no matter what outrage I must suffer. Even if they drag me through our house by the heels and throw me out or pelt me with things they hurl, you just look on. Endure it. Prompt them to quit their wild, reckless ways. Try to win them over with friendly words. Those men will never listen. Now the day of doom is hovering at their heads. All right? Essentially, give them one more opportunity to be the good guests that they're supposed to be. And we, you know, I'm the stranger now and see how they take the stranger. They're, they're piling up insult upon insult upon insult when it comes to what the gods want and how the gods want people to treat their fellow man. When Athena, queen of tactics, tactics tells me it's time, I'll give you a nod. And when you catch that signal, round up all the deadly weapons kept in the hall. Stow them away upstairs in the storeroom's deep recesses. All the arms and armor. And when the suitors miss them and ask you questions, you put them off the winning story. All right? So this is what's going to happen. You know, when I get the, when I get the high sign, the go ahead, then I'll let you know. And you put everything away. You put all the armory or you know the all the weapons and all the armor and everything you put them all away all right so we'll see that this is what's going to happen okay but when they say what are you doing so give them a story here's the story i stowed them away clear of smoke a far cry from the arms odysseus left when he went to troy fire damaged equipment black with reeking fumes and a god reminded me of something darker too when you're in your when you when you're in your cups a quarrel might break out. You'd wound each other, shame your feasting here, and cast a pall on your courting. Iron has powers to draw a man to ruin. Those are pretty wise words. <laughs> Iron has powers to draw a man to ruin. Okay, he says to Telemachus, just you leave a pair of swords for the two of us, a pair of spears, and a pair of oxide bucklers right at hand, so we can break for the weapons, seize them. Then Athena, Zeus, in his wisdom, they will daze the suitor's wits. So he will, you know, 
uh, just, uh, Athena and Zeus will confound the wits of the suitors, sort of make them like loose, like what the heck is going on, what the heck is going on, and that's when, you know, the Odysseus and Telemachus will take um, a lot more of the, you know, the momentum will be theirs, All right? So he has a little bit more. He says, um, skipping a couple lines, let no one hear that Odysseus has come home. Don't let Laertes know, not Eumaeus either, none in the household, not Penelope herself. You and I alone will assess the woman's mood. And we might test a few of the serving men as well. Where are the ones who still respect us both, who hold us in awe, and who shirk their duties, slighting you because you're so young? So, you know, we'll, we'll kind of determine who's still worthy of our consideration of not getting and who is the, needs to be the first to get So to all this, you know, Telemachus has a reply. And his reply is one of, in some ways, a bit of maturity because, you know, he was planning to be the man of the house. He was planning to be the one who, uh, you know, took over when his father was gone. And it's interesting how he kind of uh, speaks. But, you know, how he talked to his mom the one time, like, you know, let men do their thing and you go do your thing, mother, or whatever. And he's going to kind of push back a little bit here with Odysseus. He says, you know, I think your plan would gain us nothing. Reconsider, I urge you. You'll waste time roaming around our holdings, probing the field hands man by man, while the suitors sit at ease in our house, devouring our, all our goods. Those brazen rascals never spare a scrap. But I do advise you to sound the women out who are disloyal to you, who are, who are guiltless. The men, I say, to testing them farm by farm. That, that's work for later. If you really have seen a sign from Zeus, those uh, whose shield is storm and thunder. Like, let's, let's not waste time. We've got bigger fish that we need to fry as far as this goes, all right? So we see that Eumaeus announces Telemachus' return, and the suitors are mad because they failed in their ambush, all right? All right, so we have this... Uh, speech here from Antinous. And if you remember, Antinous is the one uh, uh, suitor who's like the head of them all and like the worst, the, the most despicable of them all, right? On the top of page 350. What a blow. See how the gods have saved this boy from bloody death and our lookouts all day long stationed atop the windy heights, kept watch shift on shift. And once the sun went down, we'd never sleep the night ashore, never. Always aboard our swift ship, cruising till dawn, patrolling to catch Telemachus. Kill him on the spot. And all the while, some spirit whisked him home. So here at home, we'll plot his certain death. He must never slip through our hands again, that boy. While he still lives, I swear we'll never bring our venture off. The clever little schemer, he does have his skills, and the crowds no longer show us favor, not at all. So act. Before he can gather his people in assembly, he'll never give in an inch. I know. He'll rise and rage away, shouting at them, uh, shouting out to them how, all, how we, we schemed his sudden death but never caught him. Hearing of our foul play, they'll hardly sing our praises. Why, they might do us damage, run us off our, off our lands, drive us abroad to hunt for strangers' shores. Strike first, I say, and kill him. Clear of town in the fields or on the road. Then we'll seize his estates and worldly goods, carve them up between us, share and share alike. How kind. But as for his palace, let his mother keep it, she and the man she weds. All right. So the plan is, yeah, he wants to ju the, just kill him. All right. Because if he finds out, you know, if, if he tells people that we conspired against him, we'll, we're going to lose. <laughs> it's going to soil our good name. They don't have a good name, of course, but, you know, you get what he's saying there. All right. So um, Amphinomus is another um, suitor there, a little bit more measured. All right. Um, and he, it says down at the bottom, he rose to have his say among them. And what really matters here is about line uh, four, let's say 445. He says, friends, I have no desire to kill Telemachus. Not I. It's a terrible thing to shed the blood of kings. Wait, sound the will of the gods. That first. If the decrees of mighty Zeus commit the work, I'll kill the prince myself and spur on all the rest. If the gods are against it, then I say hold back. Let's wait to hear what the gods think of that plan. Let's not jump and try to take matters into our own hands. That's not really for us to do, 
All right. So he says, but if I, but if the God say it's okay, I'll do it myself. Skipping about um, three lines, it says, but now an inspiration took the discreet Penelope to face her suitors, brutal, reckless men. The queen had heard it all, how they plotted inside the house to kill her son. So she's aware of what they said. All right. So here we go. About line 464. You, Antinous, violent, vicious, scheming. You, they say, are the best man your age in Ithaca. Best for eloquence. Counsel. You're nothing of the sort. Madman. Why do you weave destruction for Telemachus? Show no pity to those who need it. Those over whom Almighty Zeus stands guard. It's wrong, unholy. Yes. Weaving death for those who deserve your mercy. Don't you know how your father fled here once? A fugitive, terrified uh, of the people up in arms against him because he joined some Tafian pirates out to attack uh, Thesportians, sword, uh, sworn allies of ours. The mobs were set to destroy him, rip his life out, devour his vast wealth to their heart's content. But Odysseus held them back. He kept their fury down. And this is the man whose house you waste scot-free, whose wife you court, whose son you mean to kill. You make my life an agony. Stop, I tell you. Stop all this and make the rest stop too. All right. So here's the deal. We didn't know this until now. We did not know that the worst of all the suitors has everything to owe Odysseus. That Antinous's father was in trouble and people were after him. And Odysseus is the one that helped him out. And now that Odysseus is gone, he's turning on, on you know, the family so much so that now he's even threatening to kill Telemachus. She's like, you, you've got to stop. Don't you remember our history? Can you not honor anything? But Polybus's son, Eurymachus, tried to calm her. Wise Penelope, daughter of Icarius, courage. Disabuse yourself of all these worries now. That man is not alive. He never will be. He never can be born who will lift a hand against Telemachus, your son. Not while I walk the land and I can see the light. So there's nobody who is alive now who's going to kill Telemachus as long as I'm alive. All right? I got his back 100%. I tell you this, so help me. It will all come true. In an instant, that man's blood will spurt around my spear. Mm. My spear. God Good damn it. it. Says, I tell you this, so help me. It will all come true. In an instant, that man's blood will spurt around my spear. My spear. Since time and again, Odysseus dandled me on his knee, the great raider of cities fed me, roasted meat, and held the red wine to my lips. So to me, your son is the dearest man alive, and I urge the boy to have no fear of death, not from the suitors at least. What comes from the gods, there's no escaping that. All right. So a little bit of what we might see in the future. Skipping that section, it says, Returning just at, at dusk to Odysseus and his son, the loyal swineherd, found they'd killed the yearling pig, and standing over it now, were busy cooking supper. But Athena had approached Laertes' son, Odysseus, tapped him with her wand, and made him old again. She dressed him in filthy rags, too, for fear Eumaeus, recognized his master face to face, might hurry back to shrewd Penelope, blurting out the news, and never hide the secret in his heart. All right. So... Athena is still keeping everything just so, so the plan that they're making right now can play out the way it should. All right. So we've heard some things that we will that will play out in the future. Uh, we know the plan of Odysseus and Telemachus uh, that they're going to go in, that they're going to mingle with the suitors, that the suitors are going to mistreat them, and they're going to make matters worse for themselves. That whenever um, he hears from Athena. Odysseus is going to give Telemachus the sign. Telemachus is going to hide all the other weapons except for leaving some behind for them. And then the two of them, with Zeus and Athena behind them, can take uh, everybody out. All right. So um, there's a lot to stay tuned for. We're going to, we're going to really start uh, moving along with this uh, excitement as uh, Odysseus is really going to try to clean house for all the people who have been 
uh, destroying his home for so long. All right, so there you have it. Book 16, read book 17, annotate book 17, have your own thoughts about book 17, and then I will meet here, meet you back here and give you my thoughts on book 17. So until then, and as always, everyone, happy reading.